This is a 2018 Indian Scout 60. I bought it from a gentleman who had hit a parked car head on. The front forks were bent and he had broken a leg. I figured this would be a good winter project and I had never worked on an Indian before. This was not a salvage bike. I bought it from the guy that hit the car. Whenever I get a bike, I always go through the basics and replace them. Seals, bearings, etc. are all low cost and let you get into the bike and see how it really operates. On this one, I also replaced the triple tree because of that front end hit. It didn't look damaged, just the fork legs dig, but why risk it? This is a list of everything I've done to the bike. I learned a lot about the Indian in the process and I had a lot of fun doing it. I have another Indian Scout that I did buy salvaged after working on this one. I have lots of recorded videos on how I worked on that one, so feel free to jump over onto my channel if you want to see that work and how I did a lot of the work. I was a helicopter mechanic in the Army a long, long time ago. Uh, this is just a side hobby for me now. It gives me something new to learn and helps keep me busy during the winter months. So with that, let's get on to the list of things that I changed. New tires, Shinko 777s. It's a good tire from what I've experienced riding it so far. Pretty happy with them. Oil filter change. Always do that with a bike. You never know when it was done last. Front and rear wheel bearings. The headstock bearing because of the hit that it took hitting that car. And then I replaced the triple tree. Here's an example of the cooling in the radiator actually working, going from 206 down to 199. I replaced the radiator coolant and hoses. The hoses probably didn't need to be replaced, but while I had it all apart, I figured why not? The radiator was probably also still fine, but I replaced it with one that I got off of eBay. I replaced the fork tubes, the fork bushings, the fork oil, and the springs. The front end seems to be riding really well now. I replaced all the brake pads and fluid. Four-year-old bike, it just makes sense. You should be doing that anyway, but why not? I also replaced the exhaust gaskets, the oxygen sensor, spark plugs, and added an SNS air intake. I did a compression test, well, that was fine, but the exhaust bolts were rusted, and while I had it all apart, I figured why not replace the exhaust gaskets. I also replaced the headlight, changed it to an LED, and I changed the battery to a lithium ion. Bike's not perfect. There are some small defects here. There's that little scratch there on the tank, which I just decided I didn't want to paint because I kind of like the uh, Indian on the side there. Also got a rock chip right there, of course, the very first time I rode it. You know, it happens. <laughs> but see, I like that Indian tank that has a little red outline to it. And then I got a little rub there. That was um, me. It happens. Then on this side, there's actually two little paint chips on the Indian as well. The tank is not dented, they're just scratched. And I just hadn't decided to do it. So this is the House of Color Red Candy paint, which I really liked. Really liked the color and the way that it turned out. Hope whoever the next owner is likes it too. Doing all that was a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie. The front fender was badly damaged, so I got one off eBay from another bike the same year. Color didn't match, so I decided to paint it. That was probably not a good idea to do it myself, just because uh, it ended me on this multi-month journey of painting and sanding and sanding and a lot of sanding. Um, but it was fun, and I learned a lot. So um, I did not paint the tank, just because I really liked the Indian stock design, and I don't think I can recreate it. Um, it does have a little paint chips and scratches, so maybe I should have painted it. So in summary, what do I like about the bike? It's fun to ride. It has a really good clutch and a good gear ratio. Some people say the fifth gear uh, for the Scout 60 is not as good. It's actually the exact same as the sixth gear from the Scout. So I have both. I've compared them. Same both RPM limits, same both performance. Don't worry about that. It has decent range. You get about 180 miles per tank. It's a three-gallon tank. Uh, it's easy to work on. I think that it's a good design for almost everything. Um, I like the belt drive. Not having to oil a chain is actually like a good thing to me. The radiator works and is good. Um, the bike has spools to put bags on. The bags I got with the bike are really bad though, so I just trashed them. The passenger pegs are already installed, but I don't have a rear seat. Uh, what do I not like about it? The full lock steering is, is short to me. 
It's not a real problem, but it feels like it could have been more. I wonder if they did that for adding bar end mirrors. I'm not really sure. Um, the rear exhaust heat, some people say rear cylinder deactivation from the bigger models would help this bike. I don't think so. It's really the exhaust routing that causes it. Uh, and the exhaust doesn't cool off just because the rear cylinder is turned off. It does not cool off that quickly. Um, there are leather aprons. There's a lot of other solutions for it. Um, but I think it could have had a better design there. The lean angle, also, this bike has floorboards installed, and I scrape them all the time. Uh, the other Scout that I have doesn't have this problem. It has pegs. So I don't know if it's these specific floorboards or not. Um, but yeah, I, I wish they would have put you know, something a little higher up there. You can always change the floorboards. It's not a big deal. That's about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have a Scout, please uh, note down in the comments, what do you like? What do you not like? Thanks for watching, everyone.